Hi, I'm Adrian McDermott, the CTO of Zendesk. I'm super excited to talk to you today about our five big bets for the future of CX or customer experience. Now, you know, we tend to overestimate the effect of technology in the short run and underestimate the effect in the long run. I love this quote, it's so true. And we've thought about those effects and those timelines for conversational CRM, AI, customer journeys, customer intelligence and platform and how that's going to affect the customer experience landscape. We've thought about it across two time horizons, short term, 2025, and long term, 2030. How are these things going to change? So big bet number one, by 2025, conversational CRM will be dominant and proactive. And by 2030, we think that every business will live and provide conversational CRM wherever you are, they'll come and meet you. So messaging, I think, has changed the way we communicate with each other. Really, who leaves voicemails anymore? Almost nobody. If you're thinking about calling room service at a Four Seasons, I mean, it's so much nicer to order that cocktail from WhatsApp than it is picking up the phone and having a conversation. We just use messaging everywhere. And messaging has changed the way we communicate, not just with each other, but with businesses, the way businesses communicate with businesses and the way businesses communicate with employees. So what's really interesting about messaging as a platform, we think, is that it's so rich. You can browse, you can shop, you can get a delivery, you can do so many things, you can survey, you can share your location, right? The messaging window has become the web for those conversations. It's powerful and the companies can express themselves in that window and build great experiences. Let's fast forward to 2030. What happens? What are the extensions of this as it keeps rolling? Well. Everywhere that you go, whether you're a service technician on the runway servicing an aircraft, whether you're just at home on your couch ordering pizza, everywhere you go, messaging will be there, service will be there. On the runway, you can see a manual, you can ask a question of an expert on the manual, you can get pointers, you can see diagrams, it's all there, it's all immersive, it's all ready for you, it's all in the moment. Let's move on to big bet number two. Big bet number two, by 2025, all service will be AI first. And by 2030, controversially, AI will replace the majority of frontline customer interactions. Now, AI is still clearly not perfect, but we've seen tremendous progress. You know, AI is already outpacing doctors in detecting fractures. We could drive self-driving cars. We can drive around in them. That's like magical. I didn't imagine that that would be a thing in my lifetime, and yet it is, uh, even if they occasionally leap a river. And in CX land, I think we've gotten used to the way AI can help us react to customer conversations. If you think about the whole customer journey, right, we can, we can automate you know, recommendations and prediction and responses for our users. I think by 2025, we'll see more preventative anticipation and proactive engagement with users, enriching the whole cycle, not just the part at which they ask you a question. Super powerful, excited for that future. And then as we move into 2030, I think what's going to be interesting, accelerated by the great resignation, is that eventually AI will be able to automate almost 75% of frontline customer interaction tasks. That doesn't mean, I think, that those jobs are going to be replaced. It just means that you'll be able to deploy people to richer, more personal, more interactive activities in, in any job site, in any customer, customer service interaction, in any sales interaction, and spend less time up front on the difficult pieces of collecting information and gathering intent. And I think that is a trend that will continue. So big bet number three, customers will drive all service by 2025 and by 2030, hyper-specialized support will be available for everything, for a price. Let's go back in history to the classic phone contact center and service. Service in the past used to mean the business being in control. They had a script, they followed the script, there was standard operating procedure. Hi, I'm Adrian, how can I help you today? Please enter your account number, yada, yada, yada. But now the power dynamic has shifted. Companies that use new CX techniques, you know, they're getting beyond the phone tree where you had to go through every branch to get to the leaf to smart systems that say, well, what is the intent? What is it? What is Adrian's intent? What is he trying to do? And what is the action that I'm going to apply to Adrian's intent? And I think those kind of bots, that kind of AI, they are allowing the power dynamic to shift so the user can feel very in control. 
We know from our own CX Trends survey that 61% of people leave a company or find an alternative after a bad experience. Two bad experiences, that number goes up. Now, in the future, by 2030, we think highly specialized support will be available for everything. We already see notions of this now. You know, I think about being able to outsource to the community, finding bugs in your system or security issues, being able to outsource things to Fiverr and these other services that provide users, even breaking up with your girlfriend. I think the idea of concierge level support for any experience is super powerful. And why not? Why not in the future could we not you know, be able to pay for any kind of support or experience, no matter what the product, not necessarily from the vendor providing that product or service. Big bet number four. It's not about having all the data. It's about doing the right things with the right data by 2025 and by 2030. The notion of a system of record will change entirely. I'll explain what that means. Businesses used to struggle initially with having all the data. There were so many data integration projects. It was about moving data from point A to point B, from database A to database B. And then we had all the data and suddenly we were trying to report on it. We had data lakes and data lake houses. We were data rich and information poor. We knew all of these things about our customers, but we didn't have insights. We didn't understand what they wanted or what their intent was. And I think getting the right insights from the right data at the right time to give each customer a personalized experience, a personalized journey is incredibly important. Companies that excel at personalization, they generate 40% more revenue than average players in this area. Now that personalization used to be driven more by demographics, you know, male, born, you know, in 1948, lives in a castle in the UK, et cetera, et cetera. But Prince Charles and Ozzy Osbourne are looking for very different outcomes. They have very different intents. They have different histories. And we have to think about what brought them to this point as we personalize for them. Because what we're trying to do is not build a segment based on demographics. We're trying to build a segment of customers of one person. Each experience can be fully individualized to that individual. Now, eventually, you know, we're going to be constrained there. You know, we, so we talked about having all the right data at the right time. And time is going to be important because I think users in, by 2030 are really going to want to control how long you have access to their data. That data is going to be ephemeral, right? It's going to be temporary. You're going to have temporary access. I, as a user, want to control what you know about me and when you know it, not just what. And so I might let you know where I live to return, you know, so I can, do, I can get a new shirt shipped to me. I might then not want you to know that. I might not want you to know my name after that transaction is over until I interact with you again, and then I'll give you a view into it. When we have ephemeral or temporary data access that users control, what's a system of record? I think it becomes a challenge for uh, CX providers and for companies that provide CX. Bet number five. Composability and low code will make it easier and faster than ever to build a dream customer journey. And by 2030, any development work you need, you'll just be able to do it yourself. Developers are in short supply, but the low code revolution, it's making it easier and faster to develop than ever before. If we're gonna have a shortfall of 1.2 million developers in the US by 2026, obviously solutions are being found, right? And one of the ways is by developing low code or no code solutions where you can configure rather than code, you can control. I think Zendesk has many great examples of low-code technology. If you think about the way you can configure workflow using triggers, the way that you can build views to do things. And code is dependent upon reuse, by the way. So composability is the compound interest of software. Highfalutin, great talk. But really what that's about is the pieces that we use, the chunks of things, the functionality, the pieces of data, we should be able to put them together and recombine them in ways that are interesting and useful for us, not just interesting and useful to the way that the people who designed the software thought was good. So citizen developers will unlock monster software development growth and develop anything that they need themselves. Developers will also become much more productive, but in the future, we're really gonna see an explosion here. So those are our five big bets for the future of customer experience. We talked about conversational CRM, AI, customer journeys, customer intelligence, and platform, and the impact they're gonna have on the journeys and experiences that you design for your customers in the future. We're very confident that at least 50% of these are true. We're excited to find out which 50% that is. Thank you so much.